Hi everyone, it's Angie. How are you guys doing today? I hope you're doing well. I have missed you. I have missed everyone. I have missed being on here and doing videos. Bo Duke has missed making his cameo appearance. Come on. You want to come in and say hi? Yep, say hi to the people. Bo Duke says hi, everybody. He's got to be a part of the action. All right, now get back to your watch post. Um, there's a couch, kitty corner, from where I have my little filming station set up here in the front room and he sits on the arm of the couch all day watching for there's a horse farm down the road that they ride horses back and forth commonly and then there's a rail trail park that um crosses like kitty corner across the back of our driveway so he likes to watch that I left the curtains open today because it's not, it's kind of a dreary day outside, so I don't think we'll have that problem with the backlighting. So we'll see how it goes. If we get into colors that look funky or whatever, we'll see how it goes with that. So what are we going to talk about first? We've got finishes, new acquisitions, and works in progress. Let's start with, let's start start with finishes yes because I am wearing one I'm not sure if I showed this to you guys on my last video if I was finished with it or not but I made this very cute blouse summer top it's very it was very very easy and very very fast to make and I really like the way it turned out I think this might be one of my go-to summer tops this year um, it's not quite summer here in Michigan. I think we're in the, maybe the upper 30s, lower 40s today. So I just put it on for the sake of showing you on a model what it looks like. And it looks like this. So um, I wanted to address something really quick, even before, I, I should have started before that. I apologize, I've been out of commission. Um, it's been probably a full month now that I have been down and out. Um, the first time were circumstances beyond my control. Um, this past week I uh, had some health problems and I actually was in the hospital so for eight and a half days but I'm home and I'm feeling much better and I'm just gonna have to take things slowly I won't be posting every day probably um, but hopefully as I recover I will be able to get back to that rotation so uh, I just wanted to you know cover bases with all that and I hope that you guys are still out there waiting for me <laughs> um, yeah Oh, another big thing that has happened since last time you saw me, or unless you saw me on my live a uh, week ago Saturday, I cut off all my hair. So all of those beanie caps I made for my bun to stick out the top are completely useless now because I cut my hair off. I have had hair down to my waist for the past 15 years at least is what we could figure. And I had just had it with it. So Jeff and I actually tag teamed and uh, cut my hair off. I don't think it looks bad. I mean, I don't think we did. I don't think we did a bad job. Um, you know, it, we did a better job than paying a hundred and some dollars at a salon to get it done, or however much a salon costs for a cut and a color. Because I did decide to cover up some grays. I don't know. I was just feeling old that day. I wanted to cover up the grays. So, finishes. I had this shirt. I did finish that multicolored baby blanket and I already delivered it to its recipient. So, I don't have that to show you. Um, let me grab my other finishes are over here in the corner because I thought about doing them last, but we'll do them first. So, I made three hats. I made three more hats. So, I made this hat which it's a little di bit difficult to see the stitch pattern. It's the same stitch pattern as this hat, but I made matching adult size and child size. So you can see that stitch pattern. This is not a, yes, this is a bag-a-day crochet um, 
tutorial. Um, and I like the way it turned out. I used yarn. This was called, this was ice yarn. Ice yarn's hand dyed wool. So it's hand dyed superwash merino, 100% uh, um, wool. So I made those two. And then this one, I'm not quite sure about because I went totally on the measurements she gave, but it doesn't seem to be quite high enough. And I haven't even tried it on. Yeah, it's not quite, <laughs> it's not quite beanie height. So I'm going to have to add another row of the pattern on to it. Um, my problem is going to be finding what the pattern was again, because I forget so easily. But I've got enough of this yarn left that I can do that. The other thing that I finished is actually not quite a finish because I still have, I haven't decided about the strap. This is another Bag o Day crochet. I, I swear, I love her tutorials. They're so, she's so clear and concise and she doesn't go off meandering into other topics like I do. And she just clearly spells it out and gets you going and repeats it enough times that you've got it, but it's not overly redundant. She's just a really great tutorial teacher. Um, but I made this bag. So it's gonna, it's so cute. I could fold these lines better so that it looks how it's supposed to look. I should have probably done that before I got the video camera going. But it looks like it gives that kind of cinched look. Like so. See how it looks cute and cinched? And so it's very, very roomy inside. You could fit a lot of stuff in there. I mean, look at how big out it would, you know, balloon to if you really wanted to pack that full of stuff. You could even put a small project in there. If you were going somewhere and you wanted to take just a skein or two of yarn, you could, de you could definitely put a small project in there. I planned on use well, I planned on using it as a purse, uh, but as soon as Maddie saw it, she claimed it. So it looks like I'm gonna have to make another one. It was rather time consuming just because there, of the puckering, it's really a lot of stitches that in the you know per round, but it really didn't take me that long. And I used um, for this, I just used Burnett. Uh, Color saver, value saver, comfort care, comfort saver. One of those. I don't have it here to show you. I apologize. I don't have any of those here to show you. I do, but it's under some other stuff. I'll tell you when we get there what I used for it. It was the stuff that I got at Ollie's for $5 for a one pound, uh, one pound rolls skeins. The only thing I haven't done is, so this is not a fully finished object. This is just a, you know, half-assed finished project. I need to find straps. So I'm either going to, Maddie decided that she wanted it to have a long, one long strap as opposed to two shorter handles. So I was toying with the idea of just crocheting a long strap and attaching it on each end. Um, but then I, um, what Crystal had done um, with hers is she had handles that she had taken off a purse that she purchased at a thrift store. Um, and Maddie and I talked about it and she said she would prefer to have that. So I just need to go thrift store shopping and see if I can find a, a purse with a long black handle uh, that I can so on to this and then this will be done so so close to being done so close all right um and like i said that's all for finishes because i did deliver the multicolored blanket uh that i made for my great nephew and he loved it and he's already using it so that's that 
Um, now we can start with works in progress. So I started making another sweater. I love, love, love Karen Tea Cakes. Probably my favorite yarn in the whole world are these Karen Tea Cakes. So I've started making, this is going to be a pullover sweater. It could be for a man or a woman. Actually, I think that's the bad side. Let me get, show you the good side. It's a fairly closed stitch. And seeing as how this is 80-20, you got 20% wool in this, this is definitely going to be a winter sweater. So I just got the rib, ribbing done and I'm halfway up the back. And that's what it's looking like so far. Um, and you can see that the yarn has, now this, this ball only has gray and green, but it also, part of the colorway is this blue. So there's two colors of gray, green, and this blue in its self-striping yarn. You could easily color control this if you wanted to, and I probably will color control it on the sleeves when I get, I'll see how the front and back look, and I'll try to color control the sleeves a little bit so they don't look so wonky. Um, but that'll be my first attempt at Re try really trying to color control something and I'm I might be playing yarn chicken with this one so it might just have wonky sleeves um, and add to the charm of it we'll see we'll see what happens then so then I have my other works in progress I'm still working on these dresses I'm not sure if I showed you these last time I know I didn't show you one of them because I hadn't started it yet, um, but I'm still working on these dresses for my granddaughters. I did show you this one, I think. I'm done with the bodice portion, and that's the front, and then I just moved on to the skirt portion, so that'll be the, and then that's the back, and the back will get a button closure. At the top here so it's a little bit like a little peekaboo open back there but it's gonna be great I need to work on this one more I'd love to get this done and I don't have much left to do I mean the the skirt is just a two row repeat on the pattern this I believe this is not going to be listed in my playlist as a link um, to a video because I got this pattern online somewhere. So I'm sorry about that if you're interested in that. The other dress that I'm making is a bag a day crochet. Uh, tutorial again, and it is saved in my playlist and this is going to be for my younger granddaughter. You can see that it has the nice little ribbing effect on the front and then I've just gotten to where the skirt starts and it's more of a tank dress whereas the other one is a capped sleeve dress so I do have some ivory I actually I think they call it antique color of this yarn and um, I think I'm going to use that and make a little bolero to go over it since it's a tank I thought that would be cute and there is one on bag a day crochets uh on one of her one of her toddler dresses there is a bolero and it seems really easy to make all you do is make a rectangle out of uh, double crochet and then fold the two sides together and sew them up to make armholes and then it just you know rides like that so it doesn't look like it's going to be too difficult to make at all so then i had that yarn i don't know if you guys remember my unboxing of the stuff that i had gotten from kitchener that uh, birthday surprise box that i've still got sparkles all look at that sparkle on my hand i just picked up i've still got sparkles all over the place from that uh tissue paper it was all wrapped in well what I figured is that I had two of the same yarn. 
These were both Bernat Blanket or Bernat Blanket Breezy. So I decided I could put them together and make a blanket. So I went and I looked on the Yarnspiration website and um, I love how you can filter through and see like what yarn you have and how much you have of it and whether you knit or crochet and it'll give you recommended free patterns. So I found this pattern for a baby blanket that I'm making with this Bernat um, Baby Breezy. No, Breezy Solid. It's not baby anything. I don't know why I keep saying baby. Just Breezy. Blanket Breezy. But that's what it looks like so far. I'm trying to think. This is, where am I? Where am I working? Oh, I'm at, a, I'm at a color change, so I'm not working anywhere right now. I've just got a hanging loose end. Okay. But that's what it's going to look like. Super cute. Super cute. Super cute. And it's very soft. Really soft. This yarn isn't the easiest to work with. If you've ever worked with, like, um, oh, the Bernat... Uh, what is that stuff called? The Bernat Blanket yarn. How it's a little bit difficult to work with. This is a little bit the same way. Why are you caught on there? There we go. You can see how, how it is, how it's fuzzy on the strand. So it does stick to itself quite a bit. But once you get used to it, it's not... It's not that big of a deal. It's not too hard. So I'm working on that. I got quite a bit done on that bla and baby blanket. I don't have a baby girl to give it to yet, but maybe someday somebody I know will have a baby girl and I can give it to them as a gift. Um, I also, this kind of goes into, I'll do this one other thing and then we'll go into purchases because I've got some acquisitions that were acquired and then used. So I've, I've already started working on the items. Let me, but let me first go over this. I had those four hanks of yarn from last month's Knit Crate box. I did not care for the pattern that came with the box. The, I, I just didn't care for that pattern. It was a short scarf. So I am making a different scarf and it goes lengthwise and it is going to consist of, it, I think it's a, oh, I don't know how many row repeat on this. I'll just show it to you up close so you can see how pretty that's going to be. I think it's an eight row repeat. So I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is one row in this dark, and then the next row is gonna be in the next darkest, and then the next set of rows in that, and then the next set of rows in that. So just like it was meant to be um, on the pattern that came with the Knit Crate box, I'll put the Put the colors together in the same order um, and I think it's going to look really nice. So it's going to be, you know, lengthwise the striping will be vertically and I think that'll make a cool scarf and it's plenty long to, um, to wrap and this is really nice, really nice yarn. It's, um, well I told you what it was last, last time when I got it. So, and I just got notification that my April Knit Crate box has shipped. So hopefully that'll get here soon and I can share that with you. I'm excited to see what's coming. And you know, they do give you a sneak peek um, when you are um, a Knit Crate subscriber. They give you a sneak peek as to what you're gonna be getting in the upcoming month. And I never look at those because I like to be surprised. I like, that's why I like, um, like, uh, mystery packs and stuff like that because I like to be surprised when I open it like it's Christmas or something so 
Now on to kits. I just got my new, both of my uh, new Annie's Club kits. So this one that I got is for the Metal Lane Sampler Afghan for blocks four through six, four, five, and six. Um, so this is what the Afghan is gonna look like when it's completed. Sorry, my hands are a little shaky. I've had some caffeine today. And I'm just, like I said, I'm still not feeling totally 100%. Um, and this, that shows you the blocks that are, you're gonna be making in this segment. So if that uses the Premier Anti-Pilling Everyday Worsted, which is a really, really, really nice yarn, a nice acrylic yarn. I, I like it. I like it a lot. But I, all I've done so far is that much of one square. And all it is is half double crochets. So it's really, really boring. So I was like, eh, I don't feel like doing that. Um, but yeah, that's, so that's the, what I got for, um, for my Annie's Kit Club. One of them anyways. Then my other Annie's Kit Club, I don't know if you recall, is the one that is the, what are we calling this? Floral Paradise Afghan. And it's gonna look like that. Isn't that just flipping beautiful? I just, I can't wait till this one gets done. It's so pretty, so pretty. And you know what I'm really impressed with with these Annie's Kit Clubs? is they do give you written instructions in the brochure. It's a written pattern in the brochure of how to do the stitches per round. But they also have a link that you can go to and they have video tutorials for every row in that round. So I found that especially helpful for I don't know why my yarn is like this. Look at, how did, how did this happen? I don't know. So these were the colors that came in this month's um, pack. Beautiful colors. But then I had several colors left over from last month that you do end up using all of these colors because I had that much left over from last month but you're gonna end up using them in this round anyway. So if you ever get an Annie's Kit Club, remember to keep, don't use your extra yarn thinking, oh, I've got so much left over, I'm gonna use it for something else. Don't do that because they want you to have enough to use for the next kit. So I have only gotten a few rows done since getting the new color, the, the new pattern. Um, but here's how it's looking so far. And I do need to block it. It's still not sitting quite right. And I probably should block it before I get any further. And if you don't know what blocking is, blocking is when you take and you put, my husband made me one. And it, there's peg, he just used a pegboard and wooden pegs and you put it, you stretch, you stretch it along there and then you mist the fabric to make it damp and let it dry and then it shapes your object into the right, so it's not doing what it's doing right now, how it's kind of bowing out in the middle. Um, it won't do that once I block it. I should and I should do it but I just get too excited about I just get too excited about crocheting and I I forget about that just like look at all my ends back there <laughs> get too excited about the crocheting and then I figure ah, I'll leave the ends for later I'll tuck my tails later but that's how it's coming along so far I think it's looking beautiful 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 and yes, this is gonna be a beauty when it's done. This is one I'm definitely gonna keep for myself when it's finished. Okay, so that's that. Then I was on, oh, what was I on? 
um, oh, a Facebook group that I really, really enjoy. It's um, Michigan Crocheters and Knitters Guild. And some, a lot of people will post their projects on there, completed or works in progress. And they're gorgeous. They're phenomenally gorgeous. So I saw one on there that I just was breathtaking to me. And so I went to the website and I purchased the pattern. I don't normally like intricate patterns like for a for like a, a mandala or like a motif. Um, usually I like something that has some video accompaniment. Uh, but this written pattern was so well written and so intricately explained of exactly where each stitch needs to be. And there's pictures for every step, like close up pictures for every step of along the way. So you can make sure that you're putting your stitch in the right place. So in the, there's a bird cheeping out there. I, I don't know, he's being really loud. Did you guys hear it? Bo Duke heard it. He's back up there. What was it Bo Duke? What was that? He doesn't know. That's just he, anything that's going on. And you know what's funny though? He sits on the arm of that couch all day, every day, waiting for Jeff to get home from work, waiting for Nate to get home from school, waiting to see people walking their dogs or the horses walking by or rabbits in the yard. But he does not make a peep. He doesn't bark. People could be pulling in the driveway. He doesn't make a sound. He's like the world's worst guard dog. He's always like on high alert, but no guarding going on. None at all. So anyway, let me get back to what I was talking about. Hooked on Sunshine is the name of this website. Um, her patterns are for sale uh, as downloads. Um, for not very much money. I think it was either five or six dollars. And there's already, I've got another one already that I've got picked out that I want to do next. Uh, this one is called Ardith. A-R-D-I-T-H-E. And it was meant to be done in a three weight cotton yarn, which I didn't have at the time and I wanted to start this. And I didn't have enough colors. So I decided to try doing it in a monochrome and not switch out colors with it. So I've got two versions of the same blanket to show you. I'm in different stages on each of them, but I'll just show you where I'm at with both of them and you can see. So um, for this one, I used a size four weight, medium weight yarn, and it's the Bernat Cozy Style. Oh yeah, Bernat Cozy Style. That is um, the one, remember I was telling you what I made my purse out of, that black and white purse? Bernat Cozy Style, which is, it's just like a, it's a value brand acrylic, but it's softer than way softer than um, Red Heart Super Saver. Um, I'd say it's, I don't even know how to describe it. Comparable to maybe Impeccable from Michaels. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a nice feeling yarn. So this is what I've got going on so far with it. And I hope you can see all the detail. Probably not really. A little bit better? No. Making that front pouch out and it's not supposed to. But isn't that going to be beautiful? Isn't it just gorgeous? I love it. I love, love, love all of the puff stitches and popcorn stitches and cluster stitches and how you um, go down a couple of rows and catch 
so, so you're making these little lip things that crease over um, just all look so beautiful and it's gonna be quite a big blanket when I'm finished because this isn't very much done on it at all the, now so then after I started this one and I was working on it for a while I thought to myself you know I wonder what it would really look like if I did it right what if I bought some three weight cotton yarn and um, bought it in the number of colors that they have in the pattern and tried it that way so I did not have access to the kind of yarn that she used um, it's about, well, at least not on it not in a immediate basis and when I want to do something I want to do something now so I went to Hobby Lobby well, actually I went to Michael's first they didn't have anything I went to Hobby Lobby I'm not usually a huge fan of Hobby Lobby's Yarn Bee brand of yarn. I kind of think it's a little bit overpriced. I think that getting it on the weeks that they have the 30% off sales make it about what it should be retail all the time. Um, so that being said, it was a 30% off week. Um, but I have to say, I will never use any other cotton in the world besides this brand cotton. And it's called, it's by Yarn Bee, and it's Sugar Wheel Cotton. Now this one says Sugar Wheel Cotton Solids. They also had Sugar Wheel Cotton Ombre, Sugar Wheel Cotton Stripes, Flex. And they had a ton of different colors. Um, this one is called Overcast. And it is a um, three uh, lightweight yarn. It says they use a four and a half millimeter crochet hook. It has 335 yards. For their retailer, retail on it is $5.99. For a three weight for 335 yards, Getting it 30% off, that's a good deal. I think that's a good deal. But I'll never use a different kind of cotton yarn. Um, for example, those, like if you compared it to this Pima cotton from Lion Brand, which used to be my favorite cotton yarn to use, I just want to show you the plies. Now, you have to keep in mind that the Lion Brand Pima is a four weight, so there's a little bit of a difference there. But just, I wish you could feel it. I wish you could feel the difference. I just want to show you the two up close. Do you see how the uh, Lion Brand Pima Cotton, the one, the darker green one, do you see how you can see the um, plies so much more pronounced? And on this gray one here, this Hobby Lobby one on the right, you can barely see the plies. It's nice because this doesn't split on you. This Pima, Lion Brand Pima Cotton does tend to split a little bit um, if you're not careful, but it's almost impossible to split this cotton. It, it, for cotton yarn, I mean, for me anyways, I don't know why I, if I'm alone in that or if anybody else has that problem, but I tend to split my yarn a lot um, when I'm working with cotton and I'm not splitting it at all. So anyway, I went and bought, <laughs> stupidly, I bought seven colors, got home and realized that the, that the pattern called for nine. So it's, I decided screw it. I will combine two colors into one and twice. So I've got two colors that I'm repeating and this is where I am at with that. So you can tell that on a piece that you are using different colors, you can definitely see those motifs a lot better. You can't even see the whole thing. That's where I'm at right now. And isn't that just gorgeous? I am in love with this. Hooked on Sunshine. That's the name of the uh, designer. 
Um, and they do have, she does have her own website, Hooked on Sunshine. And again, this is the Ardith blanket. It's just, it's going to be beautiful, isn't it? So Maddie claimed this. Of course she did. Maddie's the only one around on a regular basis, so she kind of claims things before anybody else gets a chance. Maddie claimed this one immediately. She was like, oh, I love the colors. I love the colors you picked. It's so beautiful. Can I have it? Sure, you can have it. I'd, I'd love to make another one. It's really fun. Really, really fun. I like learning new stitches and doing different things with stitches. And this kind of project makes that really, really fun. So that, my friends, brings me to the end of my whips. Now we've got some new acquisitions. So those colors that you just saw in that blanket, um, those were all new acquisitions because I didn't have any of that. So, and the, I've done both of those blankets in the past two weeks. Well, actually in a week, because for the past eight and a half days, nine, now nine days, I have been in a hospital bed. So, um, I didn't work on anything. So I did all of that in one week, which I didn't get much. It might seem like I didn't get much done, but that's a lot. That's a lot of stitching to get done in one week. So let's talk about new acquisitions. First, I want to talk about, um, I got the tip from, of course, Bag -a Day Crochet. Love Crystal. Um, who doesn't? I mean, seriously, who, who doesn't like crystal she's just such a down-to-earth cool person I love her so I ordered from um, a small uh, shop on Etsy that she had highlighted on her channel a couple of weeks ago I believe it's called evergreen let's see if it says it on there because I took it out of the I took this out of the um, packaging bag um, yeah I Yes, Evergreen Yarn Studio is the name of the store on Etsy. Very, very reasonably priced hand-dyed yarn, um, hand-dyed wool. So with my order, um, I got not only a code for taking 10% off my next order, but also that beautiful stitch marker. Isn't that nice that they sent you that? Isn't it pretty? I can't wait to use it. I'm going to use it too. So I just wanted to show you that. So I only got two hanks because, well, if I would have gotten more than two, I would have had gotten significantly more than two to be able to make something big. And I figured I would just get one hank of each color that I liked that was still in stock. They have uh, ready to ship items as well as um, special order. A lot of their colors are special order or made, not special order, but made to order. So you choose the color um, and they dye it after you've placed your order. I'm not all about that life. I want my stuff right now. I want it yesterday. So I decided to go with um, what she had that was ready to ship. And these were the two colors that I liked on the ready to ship. So this first one is called Cinnamon and Spice. And it is a worsted weight superwash merino, 218 yards of 100% superwash merino. Isn't that just gorgeous? So pretty. So you can definitely make a hat. I mean, of course you can, you know, that's what I'm thinking is hats with these. You could definitely make a hat. You could make some mitts if you wanted to with, with this. Mitts would be pretty. Oh, I might make mittens with this one. Yes, 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 yes. The other one I got is called All Hallows, All Hallows Eve. And it's also 100% superwash merino, 218 yards. And these were hand dyed in Olympus 
Washing Olympia, Washington. Hand wash separately and cold. Lay flat to dry, of course, because they're wool. Look at those colors. That definitely does look like All Hallows Eve, doesn't it? Definitely. This one is definitely going to be a hat. I knew it the minute I saw it that this one was going to be a hat. So I'm thinking hat, mitts. That's what I'm thinking. Very reasonably priced for a lot of yardage for hand dyed, you know, super wash wool. And if I'm not mistaken, um, I believe that they spin this themselves too. Like this is wool from their sheep. That could be a different studio I'm thinking of, or a different store I'm thinking of. So don't quote me on that. It could be a different store that that I that I heard that I saw. In fact, I think it is. But still, even at that, these were good prices. I, they were twenty dollars a hank, um, which for worsted weight, two hundred and eighteen yards. Hand dyed superwash merino it is well worth it. So I got those. Now for the funnest thing that I got. I know I would should have said most fun, but I like to say funnest. I'm still getting sparkles off my table here. Pick up my hand, I got sparkles. I uh, placed an order from Hobby, and I placed the order because I wanted to get. And I do have it, and it's over, and I'm not going to go get it because I don't want to. Well, I could go get it because I do have one other thing I wanted to show you. All right. Do you think I should pause you, or can you hang on for a second? Um, I'm going to let you hang on for a second because that way I don't have to process the video and everything. Um, if I have to start and stop it. Then I have to, uh, if I start and stop the video, then I have to tie them together and do all kinds of technology stuff that I just really don't feel like doing today. Okay, see that didn't take too long. Thank you for your patience. Sorry and I'm back. Okay. So the reason I had ordered from Hobby was because I wanted to order some of this Cotton Kings. So this is a new purchase too. Co Cotton Kings Sultan Deluxe. It's a 100% cotton and this is a number two fine weight or sport weight, whatever you want to call it. 100% cotton, um, but it's ombre. And this was nice because it came with a pull tab in the middle. So what I'm making, it's kind of funny because what, sometimes things are just serendipitous. Um, what I wanted this to, uh, that I was going to use to make, I realized wasn't going to work because I was going to make a children's dress out of it. Um, and the pattern I had in mind called for to wait cotton and I thought wouldn't that look beautiful as an ombre dress and it would have except that it wasn't a raglan style top-down dress it was a front and a back that had to get seamed together and with it being ombre it just it wouldn't have worked out it would have looked stupid so then I was stuck with this and it just wasn't cheap I mean, I, it wasn't expensive. I got it on sale. I think I got it on sale for like fifteen ninety or something like that. But regular place was like thirty some dollars for this thing, and I thought, what the hell am I going to do with this? And serendipitously, one of uh, Crystal's um, tutorials that popped up. Um, I just got home yesterday afternoon. And I was just scrolling through and looking at all of the YouTube videos I had missed. And I saw this, um, it's called the, what is she calling it? It has, it has something to do with Freddie Mercury. I know it does. 
um, shawl, but it's, it's going to be a shawl. And so I clicked on it to see, you know, I like to watch the beginning. So when she says what size hook she's using, what yarn she's using, she's like, I'm using Cotton King's Salt and Deluxe. And I was like, oh, I have some of that. I could use that. So I did start this last night and I got this teeny weeny little bit done. Haven't even started changing colors yet, but it's going to make a beautiful shawl, don't you think? Nice, light summer shawl. Nice and drapey because it's so fine, such a fine weight cotton. I think it's going to be very nice. So that's why I ordered from Hobby. Because I wanted that Cotton King Salt and Deluxe. While I was there, I figured I would try a couple mystery packs. So, I got a couple mystery packs from Hobby. Now, I got a wool mystery pack, and I can't remember if I got a cotton mystery pack or... They call them fun bags, fun packs. Fun bags or fun packs, I can't remember which. I got a... Did I get a... I think I got a cotton and a... A cotton and a wool or a acrylic and a wool. Anyways, I tore these bags open. I haven't... I haven't looked at them yet. I wanted to do that with you guys. So let's see what we got. We'll just start with this one because it's on my right. This must be our wool bag. So, ooh, baby wool. Happy Sheep 100% pure wool. Happy Sheep must be the brand name. Now this says, this is a one super fine. I would call it a two. For sure. Um, it's saying use a three millimeter hook. It's it's very soft for wool. Is it a hundred percent wool? Hundred percent wool. Hundred and eighty yards. Color number twenty seven. So that's what that looks like. See, that doesn't look like a one to me. Let's compare it to this, which is a number two. So look, look at the thickness of that strand and the thickness of one of these strands. I mean, this is even heavier than this, which they're calling a two, but they're calling this a one. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying I'm an expert or anything, but I wouldn't call that a one. Okay, what else have we got in here? Okay, looks like we've got some more of that happy sheep in a different color. Some more, some more, some more. So we've got one, two, three, four, five total balls of the happy sheep baby wool. Um, all the same specs as the first one that I told you. And I don't know, can I put all these colors together and make something? That'd be... Well, can I put all those colors? Yeah, heck yeah, I could. People do strange things with colors these days and they turn out looking awesome. What could I put together and make with this? Hmm, where could I find a pattern with a size two? Was something I could make with this. Got any ideas? Anybody have any ideas what I could make with two, four, six, a thousand eighty about a thousand eighty yards of a size two have you ever have i ever told you guys about um i'm sorry i'm so talkative today i've just been really really lonely um have i ever told you guys about uh crochet patterns dot no yeah crochet patterns galore dot com it's a website, you can go in there, you can put in how much yardage you have of yarn, and it searches a database of thousands and thousands of patterns and gives you patterns with, uh, with links to free patterns. Most of the time they're free. Um, free patterns for that yardage of yarn that you have. They can also give you, like, let's say you've got a particular brand and type of yarn. You can put that in there, and it'll show you patterns 
using that type of yarn. So maybe I'll try to try to look something up with this and see see what I can do. But pretty, those are, I mean, they're really, I'm not disappointed in those. Um, the mystery bag for the wool, I don't have my packing slip, I'm super sorry. Um, or fun bag, I think they call it a fun bag. Uh, I, I wanna say it was $24.99. Oh, now that's nice, I got two of the same. So this is Hobby Brands Highland Wool. It's 100% Peruvian wool. This is a lightweight three, approximately, or it has 191 yards per, per skein. So yeah, they're saying this is a lightweight three and they're saying this is a super fine one and if you hold them side by side, they look damn near identical to me. You see that? So there's no way that this is a one. You can't see because my finger's in the way. Yeah, there's no, there's no way this is a one. I would call it a light three, almost. I would also call this a light three. It's definitely not a generous three, but two of the same color, that's nice. So you can do something with that for sure. Then what do we else got? We've got another Highland wool, 100% Peruvian wool, same specs. So I got three of those now of the same. You could definitely put those three colors together, make a hat or two. If you have these three, you could probably make two hats out of three skeins of a size three. Definitely, for sure. Or hat, hat, matching hat and gloves. Yeah. That would be, not gloves, but mittens. You know what I mean. Okay, then we have, ooh, I don't know about this stuff. This is called Navia Trio. This is 100% pure new wool. I love the color. I really, really, really love the color. It's like springtime grass green. What I do not love is the feeling of it. It is scratchy. It is definitely scratchy. Smells like, smells like wool. Wool has a distinct smell. Do you ever notice that? Doesn't say anything much about it. Shetland wool and Australian lambs wool tells you care instructions. It doesn't give you any yardage or what weight it is, but I would say it's a four weight yarn. Um, yeah, it's probably a four weight yarn. Don't know what I'd ever do with this because it's really not that much yard. It's 50 grams of a four weight. I don't know what you could get out of this. I do know what I could get out of this. Actually, I take that back something fantastical I forgot to show you guys. I'm gonna show you in a minute. Okay. Oh my God, I've been rambling forever. I gotta get off here. Then last but not least in our wool box or bag, I got Starlight, which is 60% superwash wool, 25% polyamide and 15% reflective polyester. Oh, cool. So this is that yarn that it has the reflector stuff in it. So it would be cool to make like a hat out of this, or at least maybe the brim of a hat out of this for if you're a nighttime runner, um, you know, so people, so people don't hit you, lights reflect off you. Yeah, I can see that, that's pretty cool. All right, so that was the wool bag. 
Should I cut this off here and wait until next week and show you the other bag, or should we just keep going? We'll just keep going. If you're watching, you're watching. If you're not, you're not. Um, I'm, in, I'm happy with the wool bag. Like I said, I think it was $24.99, which I didn't think was too bad of a price. Now, let's see what my other bag is. If it's cotton or if it's acrylic, because I don't remember. Acrylic. I got the acrylic one, which I think was $14.99. Don't quote me, folks. Don't quote me at all. Um, this is beautiful. This is called Universe. 98% acrylic, 2% polyester. That must be the sparkles in it. Look at that. Look at how sparkly beautiful that is. I love the colors. So pretty. The only problem I can foresee with this is it is a super fine one weight yarn. It has 505 yards. Of course it does because it's just a one, it's a one weight. You know, being that it has that sparkle in it, you could easily pair this with another yarn um, and, you know, pair it with a three and make it a size four. <laughs> Um, you could probably even pair it with a four, actually. It is very, very pretty yarn. I like it. I wish, I just wish it wasn't so fine. Now, this one looks similar. This is called Universe. What was this one called? Oh, yeah, it is similar. Duh, because they're both the same. So here's another one called Universe. This looks bigger, though. Oh, this is a three, lightweight three. So the three weight has 240 yards. That's really pretty. That'd make a great hat. Yes, it would. That'd make a really nice hat. I like that ombre. I could use a good small project. <gasps> oh, look at this. <gasps> oh, I am in love with this. This is the Hobby Brands Carnival. 100% premium acrylic. It is a roving style yarn. And this reminds me exactly of Red Heart Unforgettable. Exactly. Um, it's nice, it's thin like Red Heart Unforgettable. Except that even though it is roving style, it doesn't appear to go to extremes. Like, you know how some roving yarn can be extremely fat on one part and then like string-like on another part? These, all of these strands appear to be, you know, fairly uniform. They don't seem to vary all that much, but look at all those colors in there. That's gorgeous. What am I gonna make with that? Oh my gosh. I wish I had more than one. This is really pretty. It was really pretty. 262 yards of a light number three. Nice. Like that. That was a good one. Okay, what else do we have here? We have Amigo XL 100% acrylic yarn. It is 109 yards of a medium four worsted weight. And it's nice and soft. It's a nice, soft, squishy acrylic. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not very much yardage. 109 yards. I know what I can do with it. I'm going to show you guys in a minute. All right. Only a couple left. So now we've got Amigo. That, that was Amigo XL. This is just regular Amigo which is 100% acrylic. This is a really soft acrylic. That feels nice. That feels really nice. It's a very soft acrylic, very squishy. Um, this is a three worsted weight, or three lightweight three, uh, 191 yards in this color. It doesn't tell me the color. Color 52. And it looks like our last two are going to be the same thing, just in a different color. 
So we've got two of these yellows and this bright fuchsia. Could do something with that. We got what? Two, four, six hundred yards total. You could make some, you could do something with that. I don't know that I love those two colors together. Yeah. Not so much, but when in Rome, no, I'm just that's an inside joke. Um, it won't be inside anymore because I'm going to tell you what it means. We use the term when in Rome when it's completely non-applicable non to the situation that we're in. Like, I realized that that wasn't the correct time to use that statement, but that's the joke, is that you use it when it's not the right time to use that statement. I'm gonna leave this out because I'm gonna whip up a hat today with this. I need to uh, get off my, I'm not that I'm on my feet, but I need to get back into resting in my chair. I've already been out, up and doing stuff for far longer than I was supposed to. So, um, yeah. The last thing I want to show you, though, is so stinking awesome that I can't wait until it's finished. I, I'm kind of hesitant to even show you right now, but it's going to be great. Some of those yarns that I just got that um, there isn't enough to do, like, much of anything with, like if it's not even enough to make a hat or not even enough to make a pair of mitts, um, I might make these. It's not finished yet, but, okay, just imagine with me. Okay, this bottom part and the interior of this cylinder are made with cotton yarn. This outer part is made with um, impeccable, loops and threads impeccable in the color charcoal tweed. And it's going to have a glove that's going to come up onto your wrist. It is a freaking can koozie. Tell me that's not the most awesome idea for in the fall or the spring when you're having bonfires and you're out by the fire pit and your beer can's cold and your hand is cold. A can koozie. That's a mitten. I saw this. Um, it popped up as a recommendation on one of um, Bag of Day Crochets. Uh, I was watching another video and this one popped up as a suggestion. I was like, what the heck is that? Went and checked it out. I said, oh yeah, we got to have some of those. So I'm going to be popping these out like crazy because I know that at craft shows, these are going to, I think these will go. This one I'm making in particular, I'm making for a friend of mine. Um, so it's already been, it's already got a home, um, but I'm going to make more of them. They're fun, fun and easy and yeah, so maybe I'll do that with, eh, I don't know. This is just a regular size four worsted weight. And you wouldn't have to use cotton on the inside just because cans sweat. You might want to use something other than acrylic. But if you're not worried about that, then make it out of the whole thing out of acrylic um, or out of whatever you want to make it out of. But I just thought it was really cool. So I'm going to end on that note. So thank you guys so much, everybody, for if you hung out with me until the end, your troopers, I appreciate you. I appreciate your patience while I was gone and um, so glad to be back. So I look forward to seeing you all in my next video. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.